starter on the 95 Buick Park Avenue with the 3800 in it. Um, one of the first things that you want to do when you go to change that starter is you want to disconnect the negative cable post on the battery. When you do that, you just get a 5 16 socket or you could use a pair of channel locks and get that disconnected so that you don't arc nothing when you're touching the bolts underneath. And what I'll use is generally a little 5 16 quarter inch ratchet and undo that negative post. You can undo the positive post too. Um, either way, but if you undo the negative, then everything's ungrounded and you don't have to worry about something sparking on you. So there it is, that one's disconnected. I'll move that out of the way so it doesn't touch. And then I am going to switch to a different view underneath here where I can uh, show you how to get that starter down. So on this particular motor, the starter is right up in the front, just about the center of the motor, right behind the bumper. Usually there's like a plastic guard that runs across, you'd have to take off this one, ha take it off. This one's never had it, so I'm um, fortunate there, I guess. And when it comes time to get to those bolts, one of them I have to get through that hole there, the other one I get through to the back side. Um, Actually, it's that hole. It'll get me into one of the bolts, and then I'm going to drop that down. So I'll get the tools I need, usually a 15 millimeter and a 8 millimeter socket to get the small wire right here off the solenoid part. And then usually a 15 to get the uh, positive cable disconnected. So I'm going to grab those tools and get that down out of there. get the starter down. First bolt is right here and then usually you'll need a short 15 millimeter on a swivel type socket to get it up in there. Gotta keep my hand out of the way so I'm not blocking your view. Sometimes they're on hard, sometimes they're on loose. This one's not too bad. Ratchet the thing down off in there. Sometimes some of them are really a pain and you have to use a wrench to get them up out of there. But generally a socket will do it and a, and a swivel extension. I will usually get that thing pretty loose to where you can see that's going to come right out of there now the bolt. Now I'll just turn it back in a couple threads. Because I have the bolt on the back side now and I made a mistake by mentioning them two holes there. You don't use either one of those. Those are for the actual bottom of that mount, for the motor mount. Now I'm going to come here to this back side. And usually there's a plastic shroud that covers or the transmission flywheel but this one doesn't have it it's broke off so that just makes it a little easier for me break this bolt loose get that long straight 15 up there and take the swivel off just so it's not a hassle for you Just a 
drop down, that starter should drop down to the front bolt. I'm going to take this bolt all the way out. comes down but get wiggle it a little bit one bolt out so you can't get the 15 straight up there so you got to get back to that swivel socket there get that bad dog up on there now I should only have a few turns on this one and then that starter is gonna be loose from the engine Into the starter a little bit because it's been a while since it's ever been pulled out. Second bolt out. Now, the starter, you can generally, what I like to do if possible, I like to get my little line here off. That's that eight millimeter that I was telling you about. Now this one I guess is going to be a nine. Or maybe I don't have the... Nope, I got the wrong socket on there. It is an eight millimeter on your standard American ones. They were... at 11.30 seconds. But this one is going to be a 9 millimeter. You never know, once in a while they throw you a curve and you end up with a standard bolt on that instead of the metric. But yeah, that 9mm fits it. Just gotta break that loose. And you hope they come off relatively good just so you're not messing anything up on the starter if you're gonna, if you just pull that off to get it out of the way. This one's bad, the starter drive is bad on it, so. Yeah, that bolt broke right off the solar line, which I felt like it was gonna do. Not a big deal. Get this 15 millimeter wrench. Want to get that right on this positive wire right here. Break that loose. And this here is your regular 3800 Series 2 motor, um, not the supercharged. Supercharged has a different starter on it, but what most people don't know is you can take the regular 3800 starter just like this one, and it bolts right on, it works just fine. I had a, a supercharged Bonneville, and the starter went out on that. And that was like 160 some bucks or more for that starter. These ones are only about 40. And I have a couple of them around anyway from motors. The one I stuck on that actually came off in a 3100 Lumina car. 3100 engine and it bolted right on there. Um, but this starter would be the same thing that would be on a supercharged car. Only a lot less and you can use it. Um, I never had an issue after I put that other starter on it fired right up, had plenty of cranking power, you know, a supercharger doesn't really have any more torque against the motor and starter than a regular 3800 has anyway, because all it is is just a supercharger pushing air. There, I have that starter down and out, 
But now I'm going to dig my other starter out and get that replaced. And then, so as you can see, that's out. And one thing you do want to watch out for, and I don't know how well you can see it, but this sending unit right here. You want to try to pull that up. You don't want to break that. You know, when you're pulling your starter out, it's easy to do if you're not, you know, really paying attention and you move the starter too quick straight out. You will snap that sending unit off and then you're going to have to end up buying another one. I believe that is your oil pressure unit off the the uh, bottom of the motor block there. So you break that off, that's probably another 20 some bucks you're going to have to spend, so you try to avoid that if at all possible. Okay, so here I am with my other starter. It's not a brand new one, but it's a good used one I've had from another car. And it's actually one of those off in the 3100 Lumina. It fits right up in there. You can say they're basically the same starter, which is good. I wish more parts interchanged like that on these, but and what you have here is this wire here to get started on your solenoid post. And you want to get that bolt started on that, get that nut started on that. I usually like to do that first and then I know I have it done because sometimes you get these on there and then you can't tighten them down because the starter stuff is in the way. What's nice about these is the wires are kind of to the outside and the Chevy V8 that used to be to the inside. So they were sometimes kind of a pain getting that wire facing the right direction so that you weren't getting it hitting the block. What I'm going to do is loosen that because I want to turn that wire down a little bit so it's not sticking up anywhere. Uh, there, and actually, it'll work like that, but I think, I think I want to twist that wire around because it has that little black piece there. I'm going to get that off in there real quick. Just so the wire lays down better. There's a little notch thing on it. It actually has that little piece on it. It actually is going to flip around that way there. So that piece is out of my way. It actually feels like that other little solenoid boot bolt there a little bit loose. So that's what I mean where they mess you up. I 
on your socket. That one is a nine millimeter. I'm just going to snap that a little bit so that the solenoid post is tight there. Now, pop that wire on. It's a little nut with this lock washer. Switch back over. To my eight millimeter. These are actually the same thing on these starters. They're actually pretty easy to change. And you don't want to reap them. Just snug them. I put a little bit of WD-40 on them so that they would turn easier. This one, of course, has a lock nut on it. positive post up on there. It's got this little tab. There's a little notch in that solenoid. With that line right up for you. And that just keeps the cable straight so it doesn't turn some way and hit metal or you know you don't want it hitting hitting any coming in contact with any metal. millimeter. That's the main reason you got to undo that battery though is because I'm touching metal with this cable and this is hot all the time when that battery hooked up. So I'd have sparks flying everywhere right now if I didn't have that battery cable connected. and lock that makes it kind of a drag but it's snugged up so I'm good to go on that now generally what I do is I start that back bolt first because it's the easiest one to get to it's a long one put it on here slide up under here, locate that hole for that, get that pushed up in there, get my starter straightened out, I think right there is where it is. Tight that one all the way tight till you get your first one. The one out front there started, but you can get her snug up as that starter starts pulling up into place there. So you can get your first one on there. Or your front one, I guess you call it. Right up and through there. Into the hole. There. If I 
I didn't have that back one started like I thought I did. Let me move this so I can get that up in there and feel the thread start. Get it lined up into that hole. That's right there. the same thing. You snug them, but you don't reef them. Get them, you know, you want to get them snugged up good, but you don't have to reef them right down. A lot of people make that mistake. They just reef them down so hard that at some point in time you go to pull it out, you can either snap the bolt or strip the threads. They just need to be snug. They stay in place. That's all. We're all set there with that starter on. All I got to do is go up top now here and uh, hook my battery, hit my key, and I should be good to go. All right, I'm back up here. Now I'm going to reconnect my battery. type of thing, just snug, they don't need to be super tight, okay. end up tightening them too tight and breaking off the, the bolt thing. Alright, I'll move back. Um, everything's connected. I'm going to hit the key. See what she sounds like. Fire right up. And there you have it. What was actually wrong with my other starter was just the Bendix on it. The starter drive was bad. It kept winging out and sometimes it takes six or seven times or longer before it would catch and as it catch and start turning the flywheel it would give out so I could have just changed the starter drive versus buying a whole new starter I could have bought a new starter but like I said I had a couple of these from laying around from them 3100s off those luminous and they fit right on the only difference is you might have to shim them if you bolt one on and it makes a little you know something to scrape in the flywheel or make some funny noise really loud when you start it. It makes shim. And most of your starters, if you buy them new, will come with shims. These are the shims that I've saved from different starters I bought that I haven't had to use. But generally, I'll start out with two of them about that thick. See what it sounds like. It was a little noisy. Put one more on it. Um, 
And other than that, which I did end up having to do on this, I didn't film that just because. Um, but all you do on that is, if you got to add a shim, is you undo the outer bolt all the way down on the starter, and then you just loosen the inner bolt a little bit, and then you can slide these right in place. And this one will go along the bolt. You line your bolt up through there, tighten it up, hit the key. So you don't have to drop the starter all the way down. You don't have to re disconnect the battery or anything. You just install a couple of shims to see how it sounds. And I'm going to shut it off one more time and make sure everything's good. Okay, I am all done. Hopefully I'm done working on this one for a little bit.